Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. This video is for anyone who dreams of quitting the rat race, living off grid, starting a small holding, growing food, keeping animals, becoming as self-sufficient as they can, but isn't quite sure how to go about it. Five years ago, I bought a cottage with an acre of usable land with my life savings and set about doing exactly that right here. And since starting this YouTube channel, I've received hundreds of messages from people all around the world who've either done the same thing or are in the process of making that transition. But it's not a lifestyle which is ever presented to us when talking to the careers officer at school. I remember that meeting and um, the suggestions that were made to me. I was good at making things, I was always quite creative, um, and I was good at English. So my choices um, apparently were to become a carpenter um, or to become a teacher. Never to buy an acre of land, grow food, keep animals, and try and become as self-sufficient as you can. That, I'm quite sure, would have been viewed as failing at life, which is very sad because it's what all of our ancestors have done for thousands of years. In fact, prioritising those skills and that lifestyle was precisely what enabled them to succeed at life. And even though we're all channelled down a different path, myself included, of education, work, career, a 30-year mortgage and two weeks in the sun every year if we're lucky, there are still ways to achieve this life. And I'm going to list six, well, five serious ones, and tell you what I think are the advantages and disadvantages of each. So let's get started. So, option one, do what I did, become part of that system in order to escape it, at least to the extent that you want to. It took me almost a decade to save around 40,000 euros. I never had a high paid job, but I was very frugal with money. I didn't drive in my 20s, that saved me a lot on insurance and car costs. I didn't go on holidays, and I lived in cheap shared accommodation, many bad memories there. <laughs> And it may surprise you to hear this, folks, but I also wasn't much of a party animal. So I was able to save that money independently on top of rent and other living costs, which I always had from age 18 when I left home. And you can start saving for a move like this at any point in your life. All you need really is patience and probably a willingness to compromise on the property and the location it's in. Because the chances are you're not gonna be able to save enough to outright buy that dream cottage with a thatched roof right by the ocean, already restored with a perfect pasture for your horses and a walled garden for your vegetables. Because saving to buy somewhere like that outright would take a lifetime. So you've got to be motivated by the idea of starting at the bottom and creating that vision with your own hands and hard work. So what are the advantages of taking this path? Well, first of all, it gives you financial independence. It doesn't give you independence from these midges, unfortunately. There's no mortgage to pay off and worry about. There's no bank to answer to. Believe me, that's a really nice feeling. It's also achievable at quite a young age. I moved here in my early 30s. The main advantage though, which is easy to overlook and not many people would think about this, is that taking this path gives you a taste of the very thing you want to escape. Now I know there are many people out there who love their jobs and find fulfillment in them, but there are also many who find them monotonous and deeply unfulfilling and unsatisfying. If you're one of those people and you dream of an escape, then having that memory to reflect back on during difficult times will make you appreciate and value a different way of life so much more. I don't think, given the choice, I would want the life I have now without first having had the decade of mainstream work that enabled it. Because during the really tough times when I'm here, like in the winter, when everywhere's wet and cold and just feeding the animals is a challenge, all I have to do is remember what I left behind and I know in an instant where I'd rather be. And it's not back there, believe me. Okay, so what about the disadvantages? Well, you have to be able to save money. Not everyone can for many reasons. You also have to be willing to buy cheap. In my case, that meant a ruin with huge potential, but still a ruin. More than anything though, you have to be willing to take a big leap of faith, to bet on yourself 
and what you believe will make you happy. It's an all-in, which definitely requires commitment and guts. Option two isn't going to be available to most of us, but actually here in Ireland, I know a lot of people in this position. And that's inheriting an existing property with land or moving into a family farm. And you might be surprised just how many people here are in that position. A parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle with an old cottage and a piece of land they can no longer live on, which they want to pass on to the next generation. The advantages are obvious. There's no need to save money. The property and land are there waiting for you. And if it all goes wrong, you haven't committed your own life savings to it. You will also almost certainly um, get a lot more land um, and with it opportunity than you would if saving to buy somewhere yourself. The really interesting thing I find is how much reluctance there is from people in that position to accept those offers and opportunities. In fact, many of them see it as a burden, perhaps because there's a degree of expectation placed upon them, or maybe because they grew up knowing that life and so their dream is actually to escape from it. Something I've heard many times is, oh, I really want to live that way, but first I want to put the kids through school and earn enough money to retire. So the disadvantages are that you don't get to choose the house or land or location, and it might not even be your dream. In which case, are you ever really going to be committed enough to make it work? Another disadvantage is that you might be constrained um, by what someone else wants, by their vision, and part of the enormous appeal of this life is in fulfilling your own vision. I also think people in that position tend not to jump in with both feet, perhaps because they feel, um, they feel like they always have that option to turn to, so there's no sense of urgency or need to commit. And perhaps, having grown up with that option, as many people in that position have, it just isn't as exciting or appealing to them as it was to someone like me. But, saying all that, I also know people who've made a tremendous success of that lifestyle having inherited property. So, if it's what you want, if it is your dream, then you've got to jump in with both feet and commit to it. Option three is actually the most common way in which people access the kind of life which I'm living, especially in this part of the world, and that's waiting until they retire. Most people living in the country with a piece of land, growing vegetables, keeping animals, practicing at least partial self-sufficiency, they aren't in their thirties like me, they're in their fifties or sixties, or even older, because they've made a choice to prioritize a more conventional life until reaching an age when they have financial security. So what are the advantages to waiting until a later stage of life? Well, the obvious one is that you have a lot longer to save money. If you've been working all your life, you may even have paid off a mortgage by your 50s and then have a significant asset that you could sell to enable you to buy a much better property with land in a rural location than someone like me in their 30s or 40s could afford. Many of you will have seen the TV show Escape to the Country, which follows people doing exactly that. And one thing that's always struck me about that show is that almost everyone who features in it seems to be at retirement age, and they're buying ludicrously expensive properties. As a man in his 30s who wants to live that life now, and does, frankly, I just can't relate to that. But the truth is that many people see that as their only escape route. And I think this option is better suited to people for whom self-sufficiency and purpose isn't really the point of making that move, but rather a more relaxing, simpler life in a more beautiful location. And who can argue with that? You certainly can't, Moss. Whoa. What about the disadvantages? Well, I'm always reminded of my dad when people ask me why I didn't wait and save more money. He tragically died in his early 50s, just after paying off a 25-year mortgage, and before ever reaching the age of retirement. 
I am at heart an optimist. I see solutions rather than problems. I've always been like that and I'm proud to be like that. But the truth is, um, you are much more likely to suffer illness in your 50s or 60s than you are in your 30s or 40s. Not all of us will even have a retirement. And even if we do, this type of lifestyle requires fitness and good health. For some, they get lucky. And I know people in their 70s still actively working the land in the way that I do. But it's definitely a roll of the dice. And the longer you wait, the more those odds are stacked against you. You might roll a six and have a perfect health um, beyond retirement, but if it's truly your life's dream and you only get one of those, is it really worth taking that risk? It really comes down to how much you want it. The other obvious disadvantage, worth mentioning I think, is that however good your health, you're still going to have less years to enjoy that life if you wait longer. Isn't that right, Moss? Yes. Option four is the path to the good life, which I think most people in my age bracket are likely to choose. And that is keeping one foot in mainstream work. Often, one partner will run the small holding, caring for the animals and land, growing the food, while the other partner goes to work and provides financial security. Again, I know many families or young couples in exactly that position just from the many emails I receive, and it strikes me often as quite an inequitable arrangement in which one person gets to live out their dream while the other is stuck going to work in a mainstream job, often with a hefty commute every day on top of that. Though, if both partners are happy, then there's no reason why it can't work. What are the advantages? So, compared to waiting until retirement, this option definitely allows you to live this life sooner. It also allows you to maintain an income, making it much less of a risk than the all or nothing path which I personally took. Having a stable income also gives you access to a mortgage, which opens up bigger properties in better locations. Personally, I could never have secured a mortgage for Mossy Bottom, um, having, when I bought it, no income whatsoever. Also, if you get to start this life sooner, when you may still have young children, then I think it's a wonderful gift to give them being raised on a small holding in the country, with fields and forests to play in, surrounded by animals and nature. I have to say, I would have loved to grow up in a place like this as a kid. So how about the disadvantages? Well, I've already mentioned the long commute. I did that myself many years ago um, when working in a city and the first few months were fine uh, because I got to come home to a much better house uh, and location. But after a while, uh, I began to realise that all I was really doing was sacrificing what little free time I had on top of my 50 hour a week job. And that's an important consideration because when choosing to keep working in a mainstream job, you've got the money but you don't have the time. And what little time you do have, you want to spend doing enjoyable and relaxing things rather than doing even more work to create a self-sufficient life, which you don't really need because you've got an income to pay for things. I definitely think it's possible to have too much money when pursuing this lifestyle. And I think that can be hugely demotivating. In fact, um, when I was a volunteer in Canada, I stayed with quite a few families that were in exactly that position and they tended to be more wasteful and less appreciative of the food uh, that they grew and the resources that they had because at the end of the day every problem could be solved with money. If you don't have any or very little then everything that you turn your own land to is that much more valuable and precious. A better option perhaps um, might be for one partner to, to work only part-time rather than full-time um, so that there is still a need to make the small holding pay and provide and so that they have more time to invest in it. Option five is to join others who are already living off-grid in a self-sufficient way. I've had multiple volunteers over the years who have done something like this, joining an established community. 
I know one chap um, who was able to build his own home uh, in this way, despite still being in his 20s. And I know of one such community down in County Cork in the south of Ireland, um, and another in Pembrokeshire in Wales. I'm sure there are many more all around the world. What are the advantages to taking this option? Well, there are some very obvious ones. It doesn't require nearly as much money. Um, it's less of a commitment, as you can always leave. And it's probably the only option which al would allow you to pursue this kind of life while still very young, in your 20s potentially. And that brings with it another great advantage, the energy of youth. You can work a lot longer and harder than someone older than you. And you've got the longest possible time to enjoy that life. Also, if you're in a shared community with others, growing food, keeping animals, building homes even, um, then you will be able to learn from them and benefit from their experience. Not only that, but you get an immediate sense of community, of sharing your life with like-minded people. Some of my happiest memories um, from my year in Canada were just sitting around campfires at the end of a hard day's work, sharing stories, eating a meal, or just quietly sitting in the company of friends. I didn't do much of the talking, but I still enjoyed the atmosphere. Moving to a rural location can be isolating. And if you're not a solitary person by nature, even if you have a partner and a great sense of purpose working the land or building the home, it may still feel lonely. And the disadvantages? Well, those lovely people that you get to sit around the campfire with, you also have to tolerate and compromise with, even if they have different views to you. Um, you have much less creative control because your voice is just one of many. You don't own the land, so you certainly won't ever have the final say. And relationships can break down, which means you might have to leave quickly. Where does that leave you? It's ultimately more fragile, but also less of a commitment than buying somewhere yourself. Perfect, really, if you want to sample an off-grid self-sufficient lifestyle. A first step in that direction. And what a great way to learn. For me personally, it wouldn't work, simply because a huge part of the pleasure that I derive from living here at Mossy Bottom is that sense of creative control. Getting to decide what jobs get done and when and how. To design things and plan things and work to my own rhythm. But I often think how lovely it would be um, to be surrounded by people living the way that I live, each with different skills, um, that we could combine without the need uh, for money to change hands. Of course, there are people like that, but they aren't my immediate neighbours. That vision of a wider community um, in which you still have your own property and land is, I think, the perfect way to live this life. Finally, option six, and this is the one that isn't quite so serious. Find a piece of wilderness. Equip yourselves with some essential survival items and head out, like in that TV show, alone. Except try not to starve to death like they nearly do. I wouldn't recommend this option, however enthusiastic you are. The practical reality isn't nearly as romantic as the fantasy. Just watch that show, and it's a good show, I've binge watched it. You'll see exactly what I mean. So those, I think, are the main ways that people conventionally quit the rat race, perhaps not that last one, um, and attempt to provide for themselves, as I do on my small holding. If you're trying to work out the best path for you, then consider your age, your health, your family situation, do you have dependents, your financial situation, can you save money or keep earning remotely, that's important. Are you tied to a particular area, because of family perhaps, or free to move? And do you want to keep one foot in society, or really break free and disconnect from it? Above all else, ask yourself, how much do I really want this life? Because there are definitely going to be sacrifices, whichever route you take. Ultimately, it's about wanting it enough, no matter how many midges come out and try to bite your face off. <laughs> Whatever path you take, 
I wish you all the very best in finding your version of happiness. In fact, if you live in Ireland and have done the same thing as me or something similar, living on a small holding, growing food, keeping animals, pursuing self-sufficiency, and you would be interested in featuring in a video series, which I'm going to film, then get in touch by email and tell me your story. I would love to hear from you. For now though, wherever you are in the world, from me, Moss, a bunch of cats and a million midges, take care and bye for now. Yes, hello Moss. You're getting jealous of the camera. Don't particularly feel like a, a doggy snog today, thanks. Okay. The main advantage though, which is easy to overlook, is that taking that path gives you a taste of the very thing you want to escape. Not these midges, although I would like to escape them. <laughs> I moved here in my early thirties. Oh. Seriously, I think my entire chin is covered in your fluff, Moss. God knows what that looks like on the camera. Bad enough I've got grey hairs of my own without yours. Hey! <laughs> uh. Hey! Mid-October and there are midges biting me up the nose, Moss. Why are the midges up my nose, Moss, in mid-October? Supposed to only be here in the summer. I don't think that's gonna, gonna get rid of them. It may look very cute to the viewers at home seeing you giving me sloppy kisses, but it doesn't smell or taste very nice. Why are there midges in mid-October, Moss? You are absolutely covered in midges. These things should be dead. It's freezing at night. Yes, I'm aware of your insatiable need to slobber over my mouth, Moss, but Perhaps we should save that for later, eh? I'm sure the folks would find it very amusing to watch. I don't think I would, though. I've got dog hairs up my nose, Moss. Up my nose! <laughs>